So, you're looking for a laser engraver that just works? This is the Creality Falcon 2 Pro. This diode laser has minimal assembly, it's fully enclosed, has a camera for workpiece positioning, air assist, and an included exhaust fan. If you're like me, you want to be able to buy a machine, whether it's a 3D printer or laser engraver, that just works out of the box. Some people like the time required to tinker around with a DIY machine, but I'd rather just put that time into other things. The features included in the Falcon 2 Pro make it safer and more user-friendly than comparable open frame lasers. But is it worth the higher price tag? The 22 watt version is $12.99, currently on sale for $11.69. That price is quite a bit higher than these two other comparable lasers. I've been using this machine the past couple months, so in this first impressions video, I'll go over a few of the functional projects I've used it for and go over some of the pros and cons with the Falcon 2 Pro lineup. First up, unboxing and assembly. As usual, the contents of the box are packaged very well. My box had a gash on the side of it, but the foam still protected all of the components. Compared to cheaper open frame lasers that come in many pieces, the main body of this laser comes pre-assembled. The enclosure does need some assembly. The frame and red panels went together pretty easily. However, I really recommend having a large flat workspace ready to support all of the pieces during assembly because the flexible red film can be a little bit awkward. Also, the included Allen key is very small, so I recommend grabbing a better tool like this adjustable Klein screwdriver since there are so many screws holding the panels together. Don't forget to plug in the exhaust fan and hook up the air assist. The laser head actually has a sensor that will start beeping if this isn't hooked up. Since I'm using this in my garage, I needed a little bit more length for the hose to get under the door. So I just attached a four inch dryer vent hose I had. But there are a few different types and lengths that are available from Home Depot, Menards, Lowe's, or Amazon. I'll link a few different options below. And you'll have to decide which orientation you want to put the support fins. They can go in the slots, so standing up, or you can just lay them flat to create a consistent flat surface. Most of the time I leave them on edge like this, so any debris can fall into the tray. This debris tray is really cool. It has some rollers so you can easily pull out the tray and dispose of the little bits from your different cuts. All right, so now that you've got it assembled, here's the most important step, the software. Lightburn is a great software and it only costs $60. In the grand scheme of things, that's super affordable for something as powerful as this program. With Lightburn installed, now you can run the camera calibration. If the laser doesn't power up right away, don't forget to put one of the keys in and make sure the emergency stop is in the up position. The Falcon 2 Pro comes with two USB cables, one for the camera and one for the machine, so make sure both are plugged into your computer so you can see the camera view in Lightburn. And then the camera calibration will take you through a sequence of moving the special card around to calibrate the lens. Now we can finally do some engraving. In Lightburn, you can create a material test grid where you can try out different speeds and power settings to find the coloration and depth that you want. This test is one of the few clear shots I have of the laser move. That's because I recommend using the enclosure all of the time for protection against the light and fumes. But it is possible to trick the sensors with some magnets. The results on these tests will vary from material to material, but this is a good starting point. With these different settings, you can see that the Falcon 2 Pro is not a speed demon, but you can still dial in the performance to engrave nicely and cut through thin plywood. Now let's move on to some of the functional projects. If you're like me, you can never have too many utility knives, and they always seem to walk away from where I put them down. So I grabbed this three pack from Menards, and labeled them with a few different locations. The laser just took off the coating on these different knives, but I think that this will work much better than Sharpie or a sticker. Another item that always seems to be walking away from me is my carpenter pencil. By engraving them, not only do I know they're mine, but they're a pretty cool thing to trade with other people. To make more than one of these at the same time, I first cut out some rectangles in a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of plywood. Now that there's slots for the pencils to go in, I can repeat the same operation as many times as I need. Another popular engravable item is a patch. This one is really lightweight, so the air assist is actually lifting it up. Nothing some scrap metal can't solve by holding down the two edges. I got a bunch of these off of Amazon, 
and they have an adhesive on the other side so you can attach them to hats or other apparel with an iron. I also cut these into strips to make little keychain identifiers for my e-bikes. I think the number one most popular laser engravable products are slate coasters. Simple, high contrast logos or images come out really nice on most laser engravers, and the Falcon 2 Pro is no exception. Getting images to come out clear and realistic is a little bit more challenging, but with some time messing with settings and light burn, you can make it happen. For organizing products I sell on my website, whyhedesigns.com, I use a ton of these blue bins. However, they're not perfect. The blue bins have a taper so that they can be nested inside of each other when they're empty, but it's not super efficient when they're on the shelves because of the wasted space between the bins. The taper also reduces the total volume inside the bin for storing product. That's why I made a few of these plywood bins in different sizes to accommodate the larger items. This one product called the TBRA Rail Lock can't fit laying down inside the blue bins because of the taper, but with the plywood one, I can fit way more in the same space. The combination of the enclosure with the exhaust fan is really what makes a project like this possible. When I've made a bin like this before on an open frame laser, even with a fan blowing fumes out of my garage, everything still smelled like a campfire. You can make any size or type of box you want from the MakerCase website. And by using this eighth inch plywood from Home Depot that's less than $20 a sheet and packing tape are less than a dollar a piece. Now let's go over some of the cons. First, the power. If you're looking for something that can cut through thick pieces of wood, the 20 watt probably isn't gonna do it. The 40 watt or 60 watt might be enough of an upgrade to get through what you need, but at a certain point, you probably need to look at something like a CNC or just a saw. Second, the Z height. It's still a manual adjustment with these two screws. I'll admit these knobs are much more ergonomic than the screws on the longer B1, but if there was a single Z screw adjustment at the top, that would be awesome. Also, it would be nice if there was an onboard alternative to the spacer gauge, like the flip down foot on the longer B1. Third, positioning is not perfect. Since the camera is a fisheye, once you get further from the center, the placement won't line up perfectly. That's why I engraved a grid on this larger piece of plywood. I can push the piece into the back left corner and work from there since I have a matching grid in light burn. Fourth, imperfect fume seal. If you're cutting a lot of plywood, it's still gonna smell like a campfire. The red panels don't have gaskets and there's some gaps around the enclosure opening and debris drawer. The exhaust fan is also a little underpowered, so if you're doing a lot of cutting, that's why I'd recommend also getting an air filter. And fifth, the closed frame design limits the workpiece size. With my open frame lasers, you could pick up the laser and put it on anything to be engraved but now you're limited to what you can fit through the enclosure opening. For longer stock, you might be able to get a little extra length through the debris drawer, but it's not an ideal pass-through slot. So it would be nice if there was a little bit more room in the front and possibly a side access and one in the back as well. Anyways, the Falcon 2 Pro is a very capable machine. For the price, it's awesome that you're getting the enclosure so you don't have to wear these green glasses all the time, and it pulls most of the fumes out. The enclosure itself makes this machine now my go-to compared to the other lasers I have, and an easy recommendation if this fits your needs and budget. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.